All right, so this video is about pipeline resistance work, especially, and proactive resistance. And I think one of the reasons why we're losing is because we're being reactive. The, the entire, all our movements are defensive. They're largely defensive struggles. We're not taking the fight to the enemy. And that means that we're always reacting to what they're doing. So when they come in with a new pipeline project or they start you know, a new horrible you know, policy around a certain thing, we're reacting to it. And we're playing right into their hands because they can predict what we're gonna do. And once they can predict what we're gonna do, it's relatively easy for them to defend against it or to you know, use reform strategically in order to defuse our energy. Um, it's difficult to defend, uh, it's difficult for us to go at a fixed position, okay? So when they're building a pipeline, they know right where they're working. They know right where the resistance is going to be concentrated. That allows them to concentrate police forces, concentrate corporate security forces, and in this scenario, which we've seen play out again and again, they control the battlefield. They control the police, they control the courts, they control the agencies, they control the media. So it's no wonder that we're going to lose in that scenario. And what I've been thinking about is, <clears throat> so if we understand that the democratic system in this country is something of a joke, if we understand that we live within a colonial state that's extremely corrupt, that's operating perfectly to extract resources from the planet, from poor people, from people of color, from women. This state is functioning perfectly to do what it wants to do. If we understand this, if we understand the agencies are all set up to approve these projects, to give out permits, to allow them to happen, then why is it that our resistance methods don't reflect this reality. Um, and it's a challenging reality to confront. I think we'd like to maintain this illusion, and that's what so many NGOs and major nonprofits do, is they maintain this illusion that we can use the system to get meaningful change. And it's just not true. We may have a small few victories here and there, but everything is getting worse, and it's getting worse at a faster and faster rate. That's not surprising at all when you understand what's going on, when you understand the depth of the, uh, the depth of the depravity within these systems and how much they're built into the systems. I mean, this is, like I said, the system is functioning perfectly. So, you know, I've been talking for a long time about revolution. I was, I was, I came of age politically in Seattle in the post WTO anti-globalization movement and so the analysis of that was there in the community at the time you know I was taught from a young age that we need revolutionary struggles you know looking to the Zapatistas which has been a limited success obviously but looking to revolutionary movements that are willing to use uh, more effective tactics given the situation that they're in you know our movements have been entirely captured by the society, it's it's like a it's like a choreographed play. Everyone really knows what's going to happen, um, and you know it's no surprise to me strategically that we've failed to stop pipelines. Even in the case of Standing Rock, when you have this massive mobilization, um, again they they're defending a fixed position. They can concentrate all their forces there, their private security, their military, police. Uh, all kinds of law enforcement, as well as the media, the psychological operations, the cyber attacks, all of that. Um, the, you know, the informants to cause schisms within the community. They can concentrate that force. It's right there. They know what to target. It's easy. So, you know, I, I don't pretend to have all the answers or to know exactly this is how things have to go. But I think we need to grapple with this hard reality that if we're always reacting to what they're doing, we're going to keep losing. We might have a, a victory here and there, but we're going to keep losing. And we need to be proactive in our resistance instead of, I mean, 
something that I've been saying for years is, look, the movement has not only failed to stop fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas, the movement has failed to stop the expansion of fossil fuels, right? The, the use of these fuels is increasing year after year. New projects going in, new pipelines, new extraction, new wells, etc. And we haven't even managed to put a dent in that expansion, right? Let alone the stuff that's already installed that's been operating for years and decades. So that to me points to a major issue, which is that, once again, if we're constantly reacting to what they're doing, if we're only focusing on one, two, three projects in the expansion of fossil fuels, rather than targeting the already established projects, then we may be wasting our time. We may be wasting our time and beating our heads against the wall. You know, I'm not saying that people shouldn't do that frontline resistance work on ongoing pipeline projects, but I am saying that we need to have these serious conversations. Where do we put our energy? What do we put it towards? And, you know, whether you're talking about Clausewitz with his uh, center of gravity theory or, you know, in a war context, or you're talking about Gene Sharp, the nonviolent theorist who also talks about nonviolence as a form of warfare, uh, and his pillars of power idea, I think that we need to be looking at what are the key things that give this global system you know, global capitalism, uh, the colonial state, um, gl globalization, the globalized economy. What are the key things that give that system power? And, you know, I go back to the things that we've talked about in the DGR book. It's the communication systems. It's the energy grid. It's the fossil fuel industry infrastructure. It's the finance system. It's the transportation system. We need to be proactively working to undermine these pillars of power that support the entire system globally and not just reacting to them and fighting using their rules and according to the rules that they set up in their regulatory systems, in their laws, in their courts. They own this entire system. We don't own it. The people don't own it. They own it. And they're setting up the rules to make sure that we lose every single time they're going to make sure that we lose. And so we can't, we can't play those games anymore. There's too much at stake. We need to get smarter than that. We need to get smarter than that.